building scalable and reliable web apps is hard. We have been doing front-end development for more than 15 years now and we are still struggling with the basics. You don't agree? Perfect. Just tell me, please, what's the best approach to build apps? You'll soon realize that there are too many options to count. Be it rendering process, the use of virtual DOM, the usefulness of JSX, or any other small specific development aspect, there is a debate on it and two opposing camps aggressively throwing in their arguments. Well, in this video, we'll look in detail at one of these controversial topics, state management. You'll find lots of libraries handling state out there, but, in my opinion, NanoStory is one of the few ones that does things the right way. So, the fact of the matter is that managing state in single-page applications is really hard. Let me explain why. Modern web apps are a collection of nested and linked components, tightly coupled together via the user data, also known as app state. All the UI needs to stay in sync and react accordingly whenever data changes in any part of the component tree. You have a couple of options to solve this. First of all, you could simply use properties to pass information up and down the component chain. If you are attempting it, you'll soon realize that this is not a scalable solution. It might work for simple apps, but whenever you have to go multiple layers down into the component chain, your code will become difficult to maintain in no time. As an alternative to this rudimentary approach, the team behind React came up with the Flux pattern, which quickly evolved into state management libraries. One of my favorite expressions is that if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. I like this because it applies really well in a lot of software development situations and state managers are no exception. All of a sudden, everybody was moving not only state, but logic as well into the state manager. Of course, various related libraries were released and the web dev space became filled with articles and opinions supporting a deep integration of state managers in your app. Just like with most things, after a few years, the community realized that, in most situations, a mix between handling state at the component level and in the external manager is the healthy way to solve the problem. A balanced solution was the answer all along. Who would have thought? The React team was the first to emphasize this new approach with their focus on the context API and lightweight state managers such as Recoil or Pinia soon followed. This brings us to today, when newer UI libraries such as Solid or Svelte come packed with their own store solutions and other libraries rely on lightweight tools which have a minimal footprint inside your code base. For the last minute or so, you've seen me building a couple of React components which act as the project base for some of our nano stores tests we are going to do. In the member store.ts file, I defined the member interface and registered our first nano store using the atom keyword. This allows us to handle the state of primitive values and arrays. In just a second, we'll take a look at other options as well. In addition to the atom, I am exporting an add member method which pushes another entry in the store. With these basics in place, let's jump into the member management component and, whenever the save button is clicked, a new username will be pushed in the store. As a quick FYI, I am using Preact for this example, which is a lightweight 3 kilobytes alternative to React. I did a video on Preact a few months back and, if you have a few minutes, it definitely deserves your time. Just like Preact, the Nano Store's manager is small, weighing between 300 and 1000 bytes minified. Despite the small size, it comes with a lot of powerful features. On top of that, it is built on top of atomic and derived stores, which employ smart reactivity concepts to ensure fast execution. I am often asked in the comments what is the reason to use various libraries I am looking at. For nano stores, the answer is simple. It is a small and fast library with a straightforward API. It integrates well with a lot of popular UI libraries and, due to its flexibility, can be gradually adapted in your project. Of course, keep in mind what I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Always evaluate the complexity of your app and only add external state management if the need is really obvious. Back to the code, I added a main component where I'm simply fetching the member count from the store and then I made the main and the member management components siblings under the root app component. Without the store, the members would have been managed inside the app component state and then passed to the two child components as properties. Next, I created an appstore.ts file where we'll save some of the usual information you are likely to find in any type of web application. Nano stores integrate really well with TypeScript, so I'm taking advantage of this since I know it'll pay off later with a better dev experience and a more reliable code base. I defined types for the language and the theme, and then, using the map method, I created an app store object. 
While the Atom method handles primitives and arrays, Map allows you to store and work with objects. During the development of a project, there will be scenarios when you'd like to monitor the state changes, either to run specific logic or simply for logging purposes. We can easily do this by registering callback functions in the store's listen special method. Also, since this is a map store, we can either change its entire state or only specific object keys using the setKey method. Ok, next let's take a look at a common concept inside any state management architecture, the action. These are functions that change a store and they are a good place to move business logic, like validation or network operations. Be cautious though, since you don't want to end up with a messy architecture. If you decide to fetch data from the server and populate the stores via actions, you should do that in all instances and enforce a cohesive code base. In this context, the fetch app props method is pretty straightforward. I am defining an action on the app store with a unique key identifier and a callback where I am simply syncing the local store with the props retrieved from the server. Ok, next let's see how we can work with this object. I created a component called header and I am getting a reference of the app store via the use store hook. Please note that in this video I am using Nanostore's Preact integration, but the library offers integrations for the likes of React, Vue, Svelte, Solid, Angular and even vanilla JavaScript. Adding any of these to your project will cause an increase in the bundle size, but the impact is minimal since Nanostores uses the size limit project to control its size. In the JSX I am simply adding a couple of buttons based on which we can change the language in the store and some classes to highlight the active language. Jumping into the app.tsx file we can add the header component into the DOM and now we can seamlessly change between languages all through the store. Since we are here we can also call the fetch app props action we defined a minute ago. We'll be doing this in a use signal effect hook which runs when the app component is mounted to the DOM. This is nice but you have to remember to call such actions from somewhere in your app. As an alternative we can use the lifecycle listeners the store is providing. Nano stores are lazily loaded and the onMount method will be called when the first listener registers to the store. Usually fetching data from the server is an async request and we can use the utility task method to perform async work in the callback. As you would expect we can run code when the store is unmounted by returning a function from the onMount callback. Ok, these are the basics of nano stores but we are not done. On top of their basic reactivity, various flavors and custom implementations can be built. These are called smart stores and can handle things such as persisting data to the local storage, managing routes or web socket communication in a seamless manner. Before looking at the smart stores, I'd like to take a second and ask you to help me fight the YouTube algorithm by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. The first smart store we'll look into allows us to save the data in the local storage and sync changes between browser tabs. I replace the atom declaration with the persistent atom method. We need to provide a unique key, an encode and a decode method and we are ready to go. Another interesting smart storage allows us to implement our single page app router as a store. This might seem awkward at first but remember that nano stores promote moving logic to the store so following this idea the router is a store, not a component in the UI framework like in React for instance. In active mode, the router store listens for link clicks on the document body and back buttons in the browser. Based on what I've seen, it should cover most of your needs, but remember that these days there is a heated debate to move SPE routing to the server. Please share in the comments your experience working with state in web apps, and until next time, thank you for watching.